Hello, this is CJ, and I am finally back from Japan! Oh yeah, did, did I mention that? Uh, I, <laughs> I kind of went to Japan. It was an absolutely incredible experience, and it's one that I plan on sharing more in a future video, but for now I'll say that while I was in Tokyo, I went to go visit the Sailor Moon art exhibit. The Sailor Moon art exhibit is a legit museum exhibit in Roppongi Hills in Tokyo. It was a very odd and sort of joyful experience. They had original cells from the anime, uh, just streams and streams of old and new Sailor Moon toys. Uh, they even had the costume <laughs> that uh, King and Demion wears in uh, the second most recent Sailor Moon musical, the one that covers the Black Moon arc, so I got to see that for myself, that was pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't take pictures of this certain part of the exhibit, in fact most of the exhibit uh, was barred from me being able to take pictures, but my favorite part was they had the original manga color spreads on display, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, and just seeing these pieces that I've adored from my childhood up close and personal was was absolutely incredible. Of course, they had two new art pieces uh, by Takauchi there, but I, I really didn't care about those. I was like, man, man, look at this. It's like, you know, it's the piece that depicts Eternal Sailor Moon and Sailor Galaxy. Oh my gosh, you know, it was like stuff like that. It, I, it was just incredible. I was trying so, so hard not to just completely fangirl out there in the middle of the room. Um, I had a really, really good time though, and if you are visiting Tokyo anytime soon, I highly, highly recommend that you go check that out. So let's get to the meat of the video. I've missed four weeks of episode reviews. Um, fortunately, I was able to post written reviews on our Inked Obsession, so people who wanted to read that stuff, thank you so much for going there, really appreciate that. Uh, but for people who are only on YouTube, I still wanted to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what I thought of the past four episodes of Sailor Moon Crystal. So. Here are my thoughts. Now, these are going to be abridged. They're going to be very, very brief. I'm not going to be able to go over everything. If you want to read my full thoughts on every single episode, please check out my written reviews on rinkedobsession.com. I wrote those while I was traveling in Japan. If you have any questions about things that I didn't cover in the video or the written reviews, though, please, please feel free to post them in the comments below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. So, let's get started. Episode 7, Infinity 6, Three Guardians. The Good. There was some added focus to give Chibiusa's mission to watch Hotaru a bit more importance. The Meh. The Holy Grail was shown in CGI. I put this in the Meh section originally when I watched this episode since I didn't understand the choice at the time. I thought maybe it was going to be used with more CGI in a future episode, but now I'm 10 episodes in and I still don't understand this decision. The Bad. There were some scenes that had some choice quality reminiscent of the first and second seasons. Sailor Uranus's sympathetic expression when she admits her faults to Sailor Moon is now replaced with a cocky expression, making it extremely difficult to empathize with her. There is inconsistency to the appearance of Otaru's limbs and its effects on her in the story. Why wear long sleeves and cover yourself up if your limbs can just look normal at any moment? This decision just doesn't make any sense to me in the original manga, and in my opinion, it could have been corrected in this version. This episode gets my first C ranking of a solid C. Episode 8, Infinity 7, Transformation, Super Sailor Moon. The Good. Super Sailor Moon's transformation was incredible. I'm very excited to see how Super Sailor Chibi Moon will be incorporated into it at a later point. My guess is that they'll put her on the right side of the screen right here. The subtleness of Otaru's slight shift to Mistress Nine in this initial scene is executed well, especially compared to when we get to a later point of the episode. The comedic scene where Haruka explains her lavish lifestyle was kept. These humorous scenes were dropped in the first season, so it's nice to see that they're kept here. The Meh. Unfortunately, Rainbow Moon Heartache has incredibly similar animation compared to Moon Spiral Heart Attack. The Bad. I'm not sure why Sailor Pluto's talisman was given bubbles as its power aura. I mean, why not some kind of haze like near the space-time door in the second season? Hotaru's transformation into Mistress Nine was laughable at best. It looked incredibly goofy, unlike the horrific transformation that was in the manga. This episode gets a solid B. Episode 9, Infinity 8, Infinite Labyrinth 1. The Good. I enjoyed seeing Mistress Nine's added vine motif. I thought it was creative and definitely fits her evil persona. The additional action sequences in the Witch's Five fight were excellent. The Meh. 
Mamoru's powers were never explained in the second season like they were in the manga, so they make no sense here. This was nothing Toei Animation could fix now, but it's a bitter reminder of the awfulness of the first and second seasons. Later, the Witches 5 scenes with the inner soldiers are slightly edited with no real payoff or negative aspect in my opinion. This seems to be the theme of this episode. Most changes come without reward or consequence. The bad. The animation quality was pretty severe in some places in this episode. Unfortunately, some removed dialogue ended up leaving two important plot points out. The first was that Haruka believed the act of killing Hotaru would now be an act of mercy since she believed Hotaru was suffering in her daemon transformation. To her, the murder would now be an act of mercy, so she felt more righteous in her decision. The second is that once a human becomes a daemon, they cannot be saved. Now, I could be wrong, but I think this may have been censorship since Toy Animation likely didn't want Sailor Moon admitting that she killed innocent human beings, even by accident. It is sad that this had to be cut since it really drives home the evil of the Death Busters. The sequence where the fake Mamoru murders the fake Chibiusa was censored by being outright cut. I abhorred the censorship of gore in the first and second seasons, and it's a real terrible shame that we have to deal with it again in this third season. Originally, I gave this episode a B, but in retrospect, with the censorship in mind, I would now give it a C-. Episode 10, Infinity 9, Infinite Labyrinth 2. The Good The nudity in Hotaru's soul sequences is foregone for her adopting a white dress instead. It makes these sequences much less awkward and puts the focus on Otaru's struggle rather than the fact that she's not wearing clothes. Unlike the cut gore from the last episode, I don't refer to this as censorship because we still get the same story and dialogue and in my opinion it aids the tale. Nothing is altered and we still oddly have Hotaru and Shibuyusa nude in the opening, so if people wanted that from the manga, I guess there you go? There is some cut content, which was good. But I wanted to point out that it was refreshing seeing Sailor Venus leading the team again. She and the Inner Soldiers had way too much character development, unnecessarily cut in the first season, so I'm super, super, super happy to see it in this third season. There was an added sequence where Pharaoh Naidi meets Kaori Knight and Professor Tomo for the first time, which, from what I understand, has several references to the original 90s anime, which is incredibly cool. There was added and cut dialogue all throughout the episode, so much that it would be exhausting to list it all. What I will say about it is that all of the added content was done clearly to promote character development. One scene clarified that the inner soldiers can now trust the outer soldiers with Sailor Moon's life. There was another brilliant scene where Sailor Moon hesitates to kill Professor Tomo since he's Otaru's father. In the manga, she kills him with zero hesitation, so it was awesome to see Sailor Moon actually give some thought to her actions. The Meh. Mistress Nine's design is good enough, but it's a real shame that it doesn't look like her horrific manga counterpart. I put this in the mass section though, because I understand her alien-like design wouldn't really fit well with this new art style. The Bad. The Garnet Ball looked pretty weak. I mean, other than that, there really wasn't anything that bad. I give this episode a B plus. Before I conclude this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new opening and the new ending. Okay, well, let's be real. It's not a new opening. They just got a new group to come in and sing it. That group, of course, being Momorio Clover Z. I always have problems saying their name. Uh, this was the group that uh, sang the opening for the first and second seasons. And well, let's be real, guys. I mean, come on. This song was made for this group. This song was made for a pop group to sing it. It's just... Very, very obvious. There was nothing wrong with the first two singers. It's just that this song fits uh, Memorial Clover Z a little bit better. And you might be wondering to yourself, okay, well then why didn't they just have this group sing this song in the very beginning? Why did they just mess around with two other singers? And I have an answer for you. CD sales. <laughs> um, this is actually something I purchased at the Sailor Moon art exhibit. Uh, and it has the first rendition of the opening, so the first singer and it has the uh, ending song of Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. It also has the instrumental versions of both of those songs. So guess how much this cost me? You have a total of, total of two songs on here, plus two instrumental versions of those songs. Guess how much? $16. Yeah, that's ridiculous, but that's, that's how CD sales are in Japan. They make bank on these CDs. And I mean, Toei Animation was just, just itching for that grip. Mm, they're just itching for that cash. Um, that being said, though, I have enjoyed all of these endings. In fact, 
<laughs> this new ending. Mm. Toe animation, you, you can't do this to me. <laughs> you can't show wet t-shirt Mamoru. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, Mamoru is the perfect argument that male objectification exists. And I don't mean this to, like, get all SJW. I mean, I'm just having fun here. Um, but he really, really is the sort of reverse, like, sort of thing for, like, female objectification. He definitely is that. And that's especially clear in this ending. Uh, as far as the actual song is concerned, though, I think it's a little bit weaker. I think it's probably the weakest of the three endings. I liked the Chibiusa song. A lot. I loved, adored um, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune's ending. Um, just absolutely adored that. Um, so much that I have went and got this CD. Yeah, this this ending just, I don't know, it just doesn't, doesn't click for me. It's just not as good. But it's still a lot of fun, and oh man. Mm. <laughs> what do I even say to that? Starting next week, episode reviews will resume as normal. I wanted to thank you guys so much for being so patient, especially since I was so quiet about where I was actually going. And until next time, this is CJ, signing off.